Right, hello. Um, we're going to record um, a short video for you now to show you how NTD submissions utility is going to work. First up, I'll just go through the installer. Very simple installer, there's only a few screens. The first one is just a welcome screen. I need to accept the terms of the agreement. And off you go. Okay, the installer is installed. You can now see that we have the Sage MTD logo, uh, the icon on, the, on the, uh, the desktop. Let's run that. Right, it's now asking for your serial number and account number. Um, this is for your MTD serial number and account number. However, it doesn't matter if you want to choose one of your main uh, software serial number and account numbers that will still work, but the utility will look at the expiry on your MTD license. So let me type my details in. And click OK. And as you can see, the MTD submissions module main form has appeared. So now we can choose our program, our main program where our VAT details are held. At this point in time, Sage 200 is the only adapter that is, uh, is coded, but I know that further adapters are coming along very shortly. So I'll choose Sage 200. In this particular case, it's going to go and log in. Once it's logged in, it's going to offer me my choice of company. So I select my company. And the next stage it will do, it will ask you for which VAT period you want to submit for. I shall select one and click OK. Once I've clicked OK, it will then go and populate the main form with the relevant details. So you can see here that my on the right hand side, my boxes one to nine are all populated accordingly. At the top right hand side, it has also attempted to populate uh, the main details that will go through the through to the submission wizard. So the company name, the tax registration number, and the start and end date. Uh, for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to change the tax registration number to 6669095566. The start date and end date uh, at this point in time uh, are not needed the wizard doesn't doesn't use these it would be nice if we can use them at some point in the future but the wizard is actually going to use the obligation periods that are given to us by the hmrc gateway so i have my details here i'm now going to click to submit my vat return it brings up the VAT return online submission wizard and it asks me for my details again i shall um, pick up, oh, sorry, I already had the right details there. Re enter them. And ask me to log into the gateway. Okay. I accept that agreement and type in my information. Sign in. So now we've got to this point here, it's, it's accepted our information and our VAT return number, and we also say yes, we can grant authority. So we'll now go away and connect to HMRC and obtain the relevant periods that it thinks you are able to submit for. And as you can see, it's come down with a uh, drop down box. There should be a couple of options on here. I, select, I shall select the relevant option and say yes, I'm going to confirm that these values are correct and I shall submit my values. The 
Great. And the value submitted successfully. As you can see, it's given us some information. Um, and with our application, we should be able to write that, that information back into Sage 200 in this case. So I should close that. I'm now going to open Sage 200 up and look at the VAT analysis screen. And look at the, computer, the, com the completed totals and the row that we have just submitted for, as you can see, now has some of the information set. Sometimes the HMRC gives us this charge ref. In this particular case, it hasn't. So our VAT return has been submitted successfully. Um, I'd like to just clear down this form now and just show you that I would like to be able to view the information that we've been submitted, uh, that we have submitted. View historical and what it will do is go away and check all of the files that have been saved on your local PC. And as you can see, it's this drop down here has only got the one tax registration number so it kind of filters everything out for you if I had multiple VAT returns then we would have multiple choices in here but I have a, a submission here I'll click OK to that I can double click as well so let's, in fact let's double click and as you can see the form has now populated with all of the details that you submitted through to HMRC the previous time I go back to new one of the reasons this tool is useful uh, for current users as well as users of older versions is that it will allow you to submit uh, VAT periods for different companies or for companies over different applications. In this particular demo, we only have Sage 200. So let's log on again. You can see here, obviously, that we've submitted that period now, so we're not allowed to submit again. If I do try and do it, then the user gets a warning to say that that is not allowed. So I shall choose a different period. And submit again. In this particular case, I'm going to cancel out of the wizard. So when you go through the wizard and exit the wizard in any way, it will write some files back onto your, um, your disk drive. So if we go back to view historical again, as you can see, this one was submitted for a different tax reg period, a tax reg, tax reg number, and we have uh, the submission ID there, but this time the submission status is cancelled. Click OK and it populates the form accordingly. The last thing I'd like to show you, if I just restart the app, okay, as you can see, it didn't ask me for the license details this time. It's uh, stored the license details, so you don't have to enter it each time. Um, but I was going to show you the help about screen. Uh, and the reason for this is it, it is potentially possible that some errors may take place. Um, the button down here will allow you to look at the log file and that will record any errors that um, that's taken place. So if I just open the log file now, and you can see there's various bits and pieces that have been output. It also shows you your customer software entitlement. In this particular case, I've only got software entitlement for Sage 200. The expiry date given is the expiry date of the MTD license, not the expiry date of Sage 200. It is obviously possible that the user could have Sage 200 and, say, Sage 50 installed. Therefore, the user would be able to come into this uh, application and use, say, the Sage 50 if that is not expired, even though the Sage 200 MTD license may have expired. On selection of that particular program, 
if the license has expired for MTD, uh, the user would be notified accordingly and it would tell you, I'm sorry, you can't use this, you have to use uh, a different program. And that's the end of the MTD submissions module. Um, the last thing we'd like to do is just to uninstall. So I just go to my control panel. Install. And it keeps refreshing. Sage MTD submissions module uninstall. And the application is uninstalled. Thank you very much.